Hey, what's going on everybody? Today I wanna to talk to you about how to live below your means to save money without giving up what you love to do. This is a big, big topic because I do one-on-one -on -one consultations and I help people save their money and help them get out of debt and all this other good stuff and put them in a place to where they can pretty much do what they wanna do, whether it's save money, invest money, pay off debt, or just buy something really nice. And a lot of times in order to get to that point, you have to live below your means and people view that almost as negatively as when someone's trying to get ripped or lose weight in the gym because it feels very restrictive and like they have to give up what they love to do. They have to give up what they love to eat and they have to give up some of their habits, but they have to be put on a restrictive type of diet or they have to burn a certain amount of calories. It's just kind of like turmoil on them. And this is really no different than that, but I'm here to tell you that you can in fact live below your means, save money, and the best part, not give up what you love. But I'm gonna give you three things today that you can start doing right now to put yourself in a position to save more money through living below your means. And they're very simple and you can start them right now. So we're gonna jump straight into it. The first thing that you want to do is you gotta start looking at money for what it is. You don't have to give up what you love doing. You just have to start changing how you see money. And the thing is, when you see money for what it really is, you do things like set a budget and you look at how much each bill is gonna cost you and then you factor in the extras, you know, the, the gas money for your car. You're gonna factor in the restaurants going out to eat. You're gonna factor in entertainment. And once you factor all those things in, you're gonna come up with what I call your number. And that is what you expect to spend every single month. You see money for what it truly is. You'll see that you spent money that would have been able to pay off one of your bills on some BS. That's what I've done before. So for example, my girlfriend and I were joking around the other day. She was like, yeah, I just got a bonus at work. I was like, oh yeah, how much was it? She was like, oh, I made another 250. You know what I'm saying? I was like, yeah, that's cool. Got her talking like me. She's talking about some know what I'm saying. But anyway, she was like, yeah, I figured that's a quarter thousand right there. <laughs> I was, and I started laughing because I was like a quarter thousand. I was like, that's exactly what that is. And I proceeded to tell her that I was gonna use that in example in one of my YouTube videos. And this is my absolute first opportunity to use it, but check this out. $250,000 is seen as a quarter million, right? Because that's what it is. But when you say it, out loud for $250. A lot of people don't realize it until you say it, it's the craziest thing. That's a quarter thou right there, you know what I'm saying? But how quickly do you end up spending $250 over the course of a month? It ain't like you spend $250 in a day, but throughout a couple weeks, throughout a month, you're gonna spend $250 plus, that's a quarter thousand that could have been going towards something else. And in my own experience, I've spent hundreds of dollars per week on stuff like convenience, you know, DoorDash and things like that, just because I didn't feel like doing something as simple as cooking. But if at the time I had realized how much that money was being broken down, $25, that's a quarter of $100. But I'm just spending 25 here, 25 there, 25 here. Before I know it, I done got to $700 that I done spent on this mess. And so you don't have to necessarily give up the DoorDash or give up whatever your vice is. I'm just telling you what my vice was at the time. DoorDash still kind of is my vice, but like, you know, I've come up with some solutions that I'm gonna share with you right now to help you not get rid of your vices, but just to reduce them so you can still do what you love, but save money in the process. So check this out, this is what you wanna do. If you have an iPhone, which is, you know, superior in terms of technology. Just go to your wallet app on your phone. You're gonna have Apple Cash. It's a card that's already in your phone, so you don't gotta set up no new accounts or anything like that. But what you do is, and this is genius. I didn't come up with this. One of my coworkers actually came up with this, but whenever you have a particular category that you know you tend to overspend on, for you it could be groceries or going to restaurants. For me it was DoorDash. But what I did was I just set a spending limit on that. What I did was I transferred money from my regular bank account onto the Apple Cash card, which takes literally seconds to do. And that was my spending limit. So instead of spending six, seven, eight, nine hundred dollars, I've I've spent every single one of those on DoorDash before. Just ask me what month it was, I'll tell you how much I spent on DoorDash. But you know, instead of spending between six to $900 on DoorDash, what I did was I put $200 on the Apple Cash card and said, hey, 
When I spend this $200, that's it. No more spending money on DoorDash. And even if you make a mistake and you say, well, let me throw another hundred up there. I wasn't done yet. You still effectively end up spending less than you would have back when you were spending six, $700 on it. You get what I'm saying? So I never stopped using DoorDash. I just started using it less. And what that led me to do was buy more groceries and cook more often, which ended up being the cheaper, more effective way to spend money throughout the month. So just by seeing money for what it really is, that's going to put you in a position to start doing better things and become more financially stable. But you really want to know what the game changing advice for this video is, because this is the whole reason I really made this video, because I've never heard anybody speak on this. You've heard of putting spending limits on cars and things like that. You just may not have heard it in terms of the Apple card. And by the way, if you have uh, an Android or something like that, I'm sure there's Google Pay that you can do the same thing with. But the game change is when you look at your budget, because here's the thing, when you, you do what I said in tip number one, and you see money for what it really is, you done set up all your expenses and your budget and all that good stuff, some bills still might catch you off guard, especially if you have one of those paychecks that I call off cycle when it comes to your bills you'll get a paycheck but then your heaviest bills will just come in and take like half or 60 percent of it just right on out of there then next thing you know a few days pass and it's almost the end of that right where you're about to get paid so you're really not worried about anything and then boom the other bill comes and the other bill could be something like an internet bill or a phone bill and it could be like a hundred and something dollars and then boom you're in the negatives and now you're getting an overdraft fee but you thought you had time because you thought your paycheck was coming in to prevent that mess this is what you can do i've recently gotten into calendar blocking just for blacking out how my days are going to go but you can also i just came up with this the other night if a bill wants to catch you off guard and sneak up on you and, and put your bank account into the negatives what you can do is you can remind yourself let's say a week in advance just so you don't forget hey th this is that sneaky bill it could be spotify it could be at&t for your internet bill it could be verizon for your cell phone bill it could be anything you can think of but whatever that bill is let's say it's verizon let's say verizon charges you on the 17th of every month you can let yourself know on the 10th of every month verizon bill due on the 17th and that can give you enough time to react and be like oh shoot i forgot about that let me transfer a hundred dollars real quick to my other account you get what i'm saying that can also put you in a position to get better with living below your means to save money because the whole reason that you're living below your means let's be honest it's to save money if you made it this far in the video comment saving is easy but sometimes we take a little too much money and put it into our savings and then we forget about the other bills and i've done this so many times it's embarrassing like if i actually looked at the amount of times it happened to me it would be a lot let me just put it that way but check this out if let's say you're getting used to saving and you're taking 500 dollars out a month and it's going straight into your savings account and let's say you have a high yield savings account like i do with marcus by goldman sachs and it's getting a percentage but it takes one to two business days to transfer it back over at least you know oh crap i saved too much money this month i forgot i have this other bill popping up even if it's a one-off bill or if it's an every month bill that it still catches you off guard you can say oh well i have a couple days let me transfer this back on over pay for that bill and then you're good to go that's just a tip i wanted to give you about saving money and living below your means because the thing is i already have another video out on how to live below your means to save money but i wanted to double down on that and add these three tips because you really got to start looking at money a different way you got to start preparing yourself in other ways and utilize today's technology to put yourself in a position to be able to save more money by spending less sometimes saving money ain't just about what you put in your savings account but sometimes it's also just about spending less giving yourself less to work with so you still get to do what you love to do but just less of it and that's better than going cold turkey and saying hey i'm done with doordash cold turkey we're good no we ain't good but anyway i know this video was on the shorter side but that is all i wanted to talk to you about today i wanted to talk to you about seeing money for what it really is setting spending limits for yourself digitally and once you do start saving money when you save too much start putting stuff on your calendar 
to remind you that you got other bills popping up and it's in this bill is this much money and if you know you don't have this much money in your account you need to make a transfer that's just a reminder to yourself and i don't know why i'm just now thinking of it and i've never heard of it on the internet or in a book or anything like that but uh anyway that is the video for today thank you so much for watching my name is reggie bryans and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so we can control you control your finances and control your life thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next video